What's up tech fans, Kevin here. Now as I'm sure the vast majority of you are aware, the Titanfall beta started this past Friday, and while it was originally planned to be a closed beta throughout, the company decided, you know what, let's just open this thing up and really stress test the servers. So as of Saturday evening, it's been open for everyone, and if you haven't gotten the chance yet, you really should hop on and try it, because honestly, this is the most fun I've had in FPS in a long time. And I'll tell you why today on Tech of Tomorrow. Now, I know not everyone's gonna agree with me on this point, but personally, I've just gotten really tired of the modern military FPS trend that's been going on the past couple of years. Not that there haven't been some good ones in the past, or even recently, it's just that there's been so many of them back to back every year or bi-yearly that are very similar to one another. There might be better graphics and a couple new features and some balance changes, but it's just been very much like playing the same or very similar games every year, and I've been really craving for something different out of a big budget FPS multiplayer game. And if the beta is any indication of how the final product will be, Titanfall looks like it might actually deliver on that promise. Now to begin with, let's talk about the core mechanics of the game, which places a very heavy emphasis on the balance between having players fight each other either as pilots or as titans, as well as having to deal with AI enemies that really serve more as cannon fodder for players, but they might actually be a useful distraction, or may even help support in killing other players if they're being very careless. Now as a pilot, you're very quick, but more importantly, very agile, thanks to the use of free running and a jetpack which lets you double jump, which is very important when dealing with enemy titans. Now as a pilot, the loadouts are very familiar to most other FPS games. You have a primary weapon like an assault rifle or a shotgun, a sidearm, and then some kind of heavy anti-titan weapon to use like a rocket launcher. You also have a pair of passive perks that give you some kind of benefit, a special tactical ability that you can use on cooldown such as active camo, and whatever kind of grenade you want to use, which are currently just frag grenades and like an EMP style one. Now as a titan on the other hand, you're a lot more menacing but also more cumbersome. You can cover a lot of ground thanks to your large size, but parts of the map will also serve as an obstacle such as a bridge getting in your way but you will definitely be able to easily devastate large numbers of regular ground troops. Now while of course this is a beta and not a finished version of the game, and I've only had some limited time with it, much less than I would spend on a full review, one of the things that's become very clear in the beta so far is that there's a great balance of the dynamic between having pilots fighting titans. While titans can easily dominate players that are just standing around open spaces and just not trying very hard, pilots can definitely fight back by making use of free running, hit and run tactics, and just teamwork, giving them the ability to easily take down a titan if they know what they're doing. Playing in either style is a lot of fun, and the game also gives you the option to get out of your Titan and still fight as a pilot while having it support you in the background. Now as far as matches go, the beta currently offers two different maps and three different match types. First off, there's Attrition, which is the closest thing to a traditional deathmatch, where players just keep fighting one another and score points for minion, pilot, or titan kills, until the losing side is forced to try and retreat via an extract point. Then there's Hardpoint, which is basically just a three-point domination match. And then there's my personal favorite, Last Titan Standing, in which all players start off in titans, death is permanent for the round, and the first team to wipe out all opposing titans wins. Overall, I really like the approach that Respawn Entertainment is taken with some of the mechanics for this game, especially the fact that summoning a titan isn't a kill streak, but rather just something that happens on a timed cooldown that everyone gets to make use of. You're always going to be able to summon a titan at least once or twice during a match. Good performance is simply rewarded by speeding up how often you get one, it doesn't bar them completely. Controls and free running are really easy to pick up, and you'll be surprised at just how much ground you can cover once you get the hang of running up walls and going from rooftop to rooftop, and there's just this constant sense of energy that's going on throughout the match that's really insane. I also really like the addition of minions, because it fills up the map while still keeping an emphasis on 6 versus 6 real players. And if you're a new player or still just not that good yet, they give you a target that you can fire at and still speed up summoning your titan. Now the only mechanic that I'm kind of on the fence about right now are burn cards. Now what this is is that whenever you win matches or complete challenges, every now and then you'll be rewarded with burn cards, special items that can be used once per match to give you some kind of insane bonus. Some of them are kind of useful, such as getting a speed boost, but others can be outright crazy, such as having permanent cloaking for the match, or having access to a special anti-titan weapon that normally isn't available to regular players. Now on the one hand, what's cool about this is that it's a random element, and if you get to make use of one of the really cool ones, it's really fun for you as a player. On the other hand, it's a random element, in a game that is for the most part, as far as we can tell so far, pretty balanced. But when you introduce a random element like that, it just throws all the balance out the window, which just might not appeal to some of the more competitive-minded players. Now of course this can be easily remedied by just having burn cards be a special optional feature to have in some matches that you can turn on or off. 
That way, if you're interested in them, you can use them. But if you want to be more balanced and fair and competitive, you can turn them off. There's also this little part of me that's really afraid of the idea that while burn cards are fairly easy to obtain just by playing the game, that they could also be implemented as a form of microtransaction by offering them as booster packs for players to buy. Now, Respawn Entertainment has said that they aren't planning on having any kind of microtransactions in this game, but weirder things have happened between development and full release. And it just seems like it'd be all too simple to implement down the road. So other than burn cards, which like I said, I'm not entirely against, I'm just kind of mixed feelings on right now, I've been really enjoying Titanfall. There's enough familiar FPS mechanics to make it playable, but a lot more new ones and refined ones that make it a much needed breath of fresh air. Also robots, I have to admit that I am easily won over by having giant robots punch each other. It's just an easy selling point for me. The point is, is that if you haven't started playing the beta just yet, you need to hop on and try it out for yourself right now because it's completely worth it. And if you end up missing your chance to, you're just gonna have to wait for the full release on March 11th. And if after playing it and you're still kind of on the fence about it, just wait a little longer because we'll bring you our full review shortly after release. If you're not a subscriber yet, make sure you become one so you don't miss out on that. And if you enjoyed this vid, please make sure to like it. Until next time, I'm Kevin for Tech of Tomorrow. See you.